Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. Today we celebrate the feast day of St. Vincent the Deacon and St. Anastasius. Both martyrs on this day, January 22nd, even though they were centuries apart. St. Vic Vincent, Deacon and Martyr. I'm reading from Don Prosper Gardonger, the liturgical year, and he is always right on target and gives us a, a wonderful summary of all these, these teachings. There's an element of triumphalism in what he's saying because this is the Catholic doctrine and Catholic truth. And we should be very pr proud of our faith and in a little bit, a little bit triumphalistic and put, put out, push out, put out our chest as it were to let everybody know the truth because so many people don't believe. St. Vincent is one of our great treasures in the Catholic Church. Don Gaudanger says, Vincent the Victorious, vested in the sacred Dalmatic and holding his palm in his hand, comes to today to the crib, and right welcome is he to Stephen, the crowned, his leader, and his brother. Spain is his country. He is a deacon of the glorious Church of Saragossa, and by the strength and warmth of his faith, <coughs> he is a type of that land which is preeminently Catholic, the Catholic kingdom. But he does not belong to Spain only. Like Stephen and like Lawrence, Vincent is, is the favorite and hero of the whole church. Stephen the deacon preached the divinity of Jesus amidst the shower of stones which were hurled upon him as a blasphemer. Vincent the deacon confessed his faith in Jesus upon his red hot gridiron as did the other deacon, Lawrence. This triumvirate of martyr deacons cluster together in the sacred liturgy. And when we hear their three grand names, the crown, the laurel, and the conqueror, we hail them as, three of the, as the three bravest knights of our most dear Lord. I hope you, you catch the triumphalistic aspect of this. We're so proud of these uh, people. And of course, when you think about it, they are our heroes. They're up in heaven, glorious, shining for all eternity. And that's something that we all must try to make shoot people be aware of. I just spoke to a man who told me that his father is dying and he has, he himself has no belief in the afterlife. And I said, there's only one thing that makes any sense in this life, is the next life. If we're going to die at the end of our life and be the food for worms, as it were, and filled with all kinds of diseases, and that's it, goodbye, nothing else, you're dead, you're dead. My dear friends, that doesn't even make any sense to me and to us, but we need to pray for these people because we know from the lives of the saints and so on today, that these people are in glory for all eternity, right? All eternity, right? That's quite a, quite a thing when you think about it. Life which lasts so shortly and gonna live for all eternity. Continuing Don Gaudanger. Vincent triumphed over the torture of fire because the flame of divine love which burned within his soul was keener than that which scorched his body. He was comforted in the most miraculous manner during his great sufferings, but God worked these prodigies not to deprive Vincent of his crown, but to show his own power. The holy deacon had but one thought in the midst of all his pains. He was ambitious to make a return by the gift of his own life for that sacrifice whereby his divine master had died for him and for all men. 
And now it is not right and just that so generous a lover of God should be found beside the crib. How he urges us every Christ Christmas to love this divine infant, he that hesitated not when called upon to give himself to his Lord, even though it was to cost him such cruel pains. What cowards would he be, he not call us, who can come so many Christmases to Bethlehem and have nothing to give but cold and divided hearts. His sacrifice was to be burnt alive and torn and cut, and he smiled as he offered it. What are we to say of ourselves, who take years to think before we will give up these, those childish things which prevent us from ever seriously beginning a new life with our newborn Jesus? Would that the sight of all these martyrs in whose company the church has made us live during these few last days would touch our hearts and make them resolute and simple. And turning to Saint Anastasius, Saint Anastasius was a pagan in Persia and he saw the true cross that was taken from Jerusalem by the king and he went to visit the holy places and was converted and lived to give his love for God. On the same 22nd of January, the church honors the memory of the holy Persian monk, Anastasius, who suffered martyrdom in the year 628. have having made himself master of Jerusalem, had carried with him in Persia the wood of the true cross, which was afterwards recovered by Her 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 Heraclius. The sight of this holy wood excited in the heart of Anastasius, who was then a pagan, the desire to know the religion of which it was the trophy. He renounced the Persian superstitions in order to become a Christian and a monk. This together with the neophyte zeal excited the pagans against him. And after enduring frightful tortures, the soldier of Christ was beheaded. His body was taken to Constantinople and thence to Rome, where he still is honored. Two celebrated churches in Rome, one in the city itself and the other outside the walls are dedicated in common to St. Vincent and St. Anastasius because these two great martyrs suffered on the same day of the year, though in different centuries. This is the motive of the church in uniting their two feasts into one. Let us pray to this new champion of faith let, that he intercede for us and to the Savior whose cross was so dear to him. My dear friends, there's lessons to be learned, of course, in these great saints and all the saints and all the martyrs that we need also to live heroic lives and in grateful grateful and gratitude to God for giving his life for us. God gave his life, Jesus Christ, on the cross. For three hours he suffered and died, the most ignominious death. The least we can do is to give our life to him. And so let us live entirely to, in thanksgiving to Jesus for dying for us and giving us the grace so that we can live holy lives and then be happy for all eternity. Let us be like St. Pio who told us, always think of heaven, always think of heaven, and always think of heaven for all the people you meet so you can save their soul. And if you can't do it by means of prayer, and not prayer, by means of talk, then do it by means of prayer, especially the Holy Rosary, as Our Lady asked us to pray and sacrifice for many souls who go to hell for all eternity, for all eternity. As little Jacinta says, it will never, never, never end. So we need to do all that we can for the salvation of souls, the highest law. Nothing is as important as to save souls. And we should tell people 
What does it profit you to gain the whole world and suffer the loss of your soul for all eternity? So let us be filled with zeal as Jesus was for the salvation of souls. May the Lord bless.